oh my goodness, should that be my slogan? If you can wear a granny square, I'm there. Oh, love it. Hey tribe, welcome to HTDC, HT Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel for the Granny Square Lover and the Beginner Garment Maker. Today, <laughs> that was a silly face, today I am going to do a question and answer. I put a box up on Instagram, um, one of those ask me anything and I have got five questions here that I'm going to answer right now for you. So let's jump into it, shall we? If you are a brand new viewer, hi, hello, and welcome to the tribe. Usually I sit down and go through all of my whips and what I'm working on, and if you want to see that, then I'll link it above because I've just put one of those out. Um, and if you are returning, hey tribe, what's good, what's happening? I hope that you're all tickety-boo. Um, before we jump in, what am I wearing? This is an Aran jumper, let me say cardigan, definitely a jumper that my nanny made for me for my 30th birthday, um, not this December, the December before and I'm wearing it today because Albie, my puppy, is at daycare so it is safe from muddy paw prints and nails. <laughs> um, Let's get started. I've got my Mac here because I screenshotted the, pi the pictures, screenshotted the questions so that I can answer them. So let's go in the order that they came in, shall we? So question number one, thank you, Ali, Woolly Ali. You said, we know how right for you your new job is, but do you miss your old job? And the answer to that is no. I was going to be really sassy and be like, no, next question. <laughs> um, no, I don't, because for a long time I knew that my time to leave was coming up, and now that I've jumped into this, I have been so very busily immersed in all that it is to run full-time HGDC, and also setting up the hub, that I'm just really grateful for the time, and that I can put it in on what I love, which is yawn <laughs> um thank you for your question ali second question that came in forever and a crochet thank you very much you asked what's your favorite item to crochet example jumper scarves etc um i'm gonna cheat on this one slightly and say my favorite thing to make is the granny square and so that ended up in me making a lot of blankets i actually have a locks foot blanket behind me at the moment um, but then once it got to a point where I'd kind of done a lot of blankets, I was looking for something else, I started to design my own um, crochet garments. So my favourite thing to make is just anything that's wearable. Um, and I have made a lot of granny garments and I've published three of my own patterns. Um, a granny square jumper called Revival. A granny square dress called Promise and a granny stra a granny stra granny square vest called Invested. Um, currently, I've got another jumper being tested. It's not granny square; it's scrap yarn, which is another thing I love. Um, and then I'm working on. I'm looking at it at the moment. A granny square cardigan. I've got a granny square jumper and skirt that match. Like granny square. If you can wear a granny square, I'm there. Oh my goodness, should that be my slogan? If you can wear a granny square, I'm there. Oh, love it. Thank you forever and a crochet for your question. Um, next one, it's at BB Crafty by Kai. I hope it's Kai, K-A-I. I don't think it's K. These are the sort of questions I should ask myself in my head, not to the camera while it's running, but anyway. You asked me how much planning goes into a pattern before you release it. This is a very good question, thank you. A lot. I am going to do a vlog on this on the hub, um, really in depth, 
and breaking it down into stages and it also prompted me to put some um, posts in the next few weeks on the hub as well. In a nutshell, um, I would say it can take you anywhere from eight weeks to three months plus to put a pattern out. So that encompasses having the design idea making your swatch, grading it, um, making your sample, writing up the pattern and photographing your pattern, sending that to be tech edited um, and like bringing a list up in my head of all my stages and then this is all in the workbook by the way I have set it out on how long each stage takes in workbook too. Um, then once it's been tech edited you then have your pattern tested I then write up any feedback changes from my testers, it goes back to my tech editor, then if there's anything I need to tweak then, I do that again, then I can launch it. But also, during that period of time when it's being tested to being launched, I then do the sort of pattern release content, so I make sure that I'm posting about it regularly so that everyone knows it's coming, so that people are excited. Um, I might drop the date at some point of when I'm going to be po when I'm going to be allowing allowing publishing that for sale, um, and then there is quite a bit in that gap of um, it's ready to go to publish because you then need to prepare your listings on Etsy, Ravelry, wherever you list it, my website, um, and prepare the images. Etsy has a different size to other websites, blah, 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 um, a lot. And the timescales then differ wildly because um, you might have a design idea, be completely engrossed in it and have the sample, like have it graded and the sample made within a week. Um, and then your tech editor might be able to fit it in that week as well. And so within like two weeks of you having the idea, you've had it tech edited and it's back and you can get testers to do it. If it's a quick object, then the testers might be able to turn that around within three to four weeks, maybe even quicker, and then you can release it. So that was like, what, six weeks? But if it takes you a little bit more time and it's a bigger item and you really need to get into the nitty gritty of how you're going to grade it, it could take you a whole lot longer because um, sometimes it's trial and error, especially when you're new or if it's a new construction to you, um, you might grade it and then get to your sample and think it's not quite working, make changes, how can I make this easier for people. Um, if it's a particularly big item like Promise, my crochet granny square dress, that had like over a hundred and something granny squares in it per size so I had to give at least six to eight weeks so people could get that done. There's no way I could be like this needs to be done in two weeks unless I'm going to give them the granny squares so they can put them together, like this, this is just not feasible. Um, and then again, your tech editor might have a big project they're working on and they can't get to your pattern for maybe three weeks or something. Um, so there's all these different variables in there that could then change it. Um, some designers also like to stagger it so that they have a pattern out every month. Some just release them as and when they're ready. Um, so if you want to put out one per month and you've just released one then you might hold the other one back so y you could spend a lot of time preparing for your pattern to be released. Um, I hope that that was a really quick overview that was helpful. As I said I'm going to put more about this on the HGDC hub um, so going to each stage in a lot more detail, the time frames, ways you can make that quicker, um, things that you could do to reduce the time, things that you definitely don't want to skimp on, um, stages that you definitely shouldn't skip. And then I'm also going to make that into a series of posts for the HDDC hub as well. For anyone that likes to um, save posts for later use, then you'll be able to do that. So thank you for your question. Um, next question was by Bex underscore Kirk. Thank you very much. Um, what were the key signs that told you it's time to commit 100% to your personal business? Thank you for this question. Um, it kind of plays in with Ali's question. Um, and again, 
full vlog on this will be on the HTDC hub because I could say so much on this. Um, quickly or briefly, because I mean, how long you got? <laughs> briefly, um, multiple factors went into this. So what were the key signs that told you it's time to commit 100% to your personal business? Key signs for me were that it was taking all of my brain space. It was all that I wanted to work on. Um, and it became a point where my day job was interfering with me doing my side job. My side job became that big that it was eclipsing my day job. Um, another key sign was that I hit the savings goals that I had put in place for myself so that I could comfortably quit my day job and know that I've got backup finance. Once that was hit, I very much was like, okay, I'm, I'm just done, I want to be out now. Um, and another key sign would be just the level of enjoyment and freedom that I have had and still get from HDDC, um, as opposed to the feelings that I was having within my day job. I just knew that I needed to make that leap um, and I also found myself speaking to a lot of people about how they knew when it was the right time and I think it's because I was seeking that reassurance and wanting to hear from other people's perspective before I made that decision um, or rather before I made the choice to act on that decision because I'd made my mind up a long time ago this is what I wanted to do it was just that courage to do it, to just step over and do it. Um, and so I found myself asking um, quite a lot of people. I spoke to Carmen of New Leaf Designs. I spoke to um, my tech editor that I did the chat with, um, Linda of Tabitha Thomas. We, whilst I wasn't recording for um, the boss talk like just before or just after I said to her how did you know it was time to go full time and I was finding other people's YouTube videos to watch on it as well and just seeking that um, almost validation reassurance that I was in the right place to be doing that. I also spoke to um, two of my leaders at my church and just for their guidance and their thoughts on it I actually spoke to um, my parents some close family members um, and some close friends as well and everybody was extremely supportive which I wasn't expecting I thought I would have to fight harder um, and so I would definitely say for anyone out there if you are speaking to people and they say it's not a good idea you need to be very clear in your mind why are they saying that because you can come up against resistance from people um, people might say it's not a good idea because it's their fear that they're projecting on you they're trying to keep you safe or they feel that they wouldn't be able to do it so therefore in their mind you can't do it so you need to really listen to the reasons if they're saying don't do it because it's an uncertain income or um, you know things like that you can say I acknowledge what you're saying however I've got a safety net of savings put by so I'm not concerned by that um so yeah it was a very that decision was a long time coming I, I I think I'd made it in my head and it just took quite a bit of time for me to just step and do it um but it is a huge step to do and just the moment that I handed my notice it in and then I knew this was full time it was amazing, um, still amazing, still riding high off of that. I think the other key sign was when I was speaking to people, the repeated feedback was, you're not gonna know how it's gonna go full time until you commit and do it. Um, because I was putting part-time hours in alongside my day job and um, I was seeing good results and it wasn't quite where I needed to be for full-time income. However, I was only putting in part-time hours. So then if I'm then focusing on it full-time, then that should, it should follow the correlation that 
putting full time hours in means that the full time income comes out. Um, so I kept hearing that repeatedly that, you know, you can wait until you're seeing the full time income, which I wasn't that far off of anyway. Um, I did hit my full time income in the December, but I did run a sale. Um, the months before I wasn't even that far off. So it's one of those where you could think maybe I should wait till it's a bit more, but I was getting to that point where to put a bit more in, I needed the more time. And burnout is very, very real when you're trying to keep the two going because I'm putting eight hours in a day, five days a week on somebody else's business. And then around that, I was doing two or so more hours in the morning and then two or so hours in the evening, um, five days a week, and then putting like a full day in on a Sunday and sometimes even hours on a Saturday to keep the momentum going in HGDC. So it just got to a point where to be able to take care of me so that I could continue with HGDC, I needed to make that change. I am going to put an entire vlog about this on um, the hub because there was a lot of factors that I considered when I made this decision to go full-time HGDC um, in terms of finances, in terms of lifestyle factors. Um, and so everybody has got different factors and they'll put different weights on them but I think it would be really useful for you to hear what factors I considered um you know what was like the decisive ones for me um one thing I will say a lot of is a lot of people would say things like um you know what about your job security and I don't I don't speak for everyone but my point of view is that 2020 surely changed a lot of people's minds on what job security is because <sighs> overnight a pandemic came in and the life that we knew it completely changed and a lot of people lost their jobs and here in the UK a lot of people were put on furlough so they're paid the wage or a percentage of their wage but they're not working because they can't do their job due to the pandemic and that started last March and it's going to continue until this September. So you're getting closer to two years where these people haven't been able to do their job and the government have then had to step in and help those people, rightly so. But job security is different now. And um, when the pandemic broke out, that really altered my finances because a lot of expenditure such as travel to work was no longer necessary. I was working from home um, and that really sped up and kick-started this process of being able to go full time. I think I know had I released my patterns but still been working full time in the office, it would have been different because my financial goals would have taken me longer to achieve. But because of the amount of income that it freed up because of life basically being put on pause, it meant that I could get there a lot sooner. Um, the other thing that that then really spurred me on to do was to um, build different streams of income. I did not want to rely on just one stream of income. At the very, very start of the pandemic, um, my employer, like many others, sent an email around stating that they were gonna have to let people go because um furlough hadn't been announced and they weren't sure how they were going to cover people's salaries and things like that and that's very very scary and i was okay my job remained but i didn't want to be in that position ever again where just my income could just stop and so i'd always been for like the last couple of years i've been really into finances and making steps to um, change of my finances to reflect the life that I want however with the pandemic starting and it freeing up a chunk of my money I then started to really put that into other streams of income so um, investing saving and then um, HGDC and I really wanted to build the streams within HGDC which really helped me get my first pattern out of there because my desire was bigger than my fear um, and then also to continue building the other streams of income. So I've got Patreon, I've got the YouTube AdSense, um, 
affiliate links are something I've introduced, um, my pattern sales, and then I'm gonna have the workbook as well. So it was really important to have those different income streams. Um, and in all honesty, I think you could build this on the side and then also keep full-time employment. It just depends on what you want for yourself, but then you would have multiple income streams. And at least then, if the worst was to happen and something interfered with your income, then you've got something else to rely on. For example, um, in December, I wasn't very well and my employer at the time, the person, the company I was employed by doesn't provide sick pay. You only get the government statutory sick pay, which is a very, very small amount compared to your usual salary. But I ran a sale. Can you turn your car alarm off, please? Try to record here. In the December, I actually ran a sale on my patterns and the response was amazing and I'm not saying I'm not saying that you can do a sale every month totally putting that out there acknowledging that but thanks to the sale it eclipsed my income that I should have received from my day job and at that point I was like I don't need them it was like a key key stage for me but also just that relief of um, okay, so my wages aren't going to be covered by my day job, but I can rely on this other stream of income it was absolutely huge. Um, and I did have a little bit of resistance from people because they were like, well, what about the benefits from your job? Um, and again, I'll go into this in the separate vlog because um, it's something you do really need to factor. If you are self-employed, you need to pay your own tax. So in the UK, we have to pay national insurance and um, tax. And then I'd have to pay my pension contributions, my student loan. Um, and if you don't have an employer, then you need to pay that yourself. Um, but I worked out that because my employer only played the, paid the statutory minimum on the pension contribution, I could, I could contribute the amount that I was paying and they were paying comfortably, so that was not a problem. I, I'm actually putting more in my pension now than um, what was going in when I was employed full time by another company. So no loss for me there, I've made a gain. Um, I didn't get sick pay, so that was, wasn't anything I needed to factor in. Um, and the way that I've got my backup plan for that is I've got savings to rely on and also if it really came to it I would just be honest and run another sale and explain what's happening because the crochet community is amazing and they really rally around each other um but hopefully my health will be nice and straight and I won't need anything like that um no roller coaster health issues please please lord um and then I wasn't entitled to maternity pay other than what the government provides and again it's a very small fraction. No I'm not pregnant but it's something in the future to think about um, and so I wasn't losing anything. It's another key sign if you're not losing anything what are you staying for? So in summary you need your own factors and you need your own plan because everybody's journey is different, everyone's life and responsibilities are completely different. Um, in terms of responsibilities, I have had a few people come at me like, you don't have a family, you don't have a mortgage, doesn't mean I don't have responsibilities. Everybody has their own responsibilities. Um, then you also should speak to your support bubble, whoever that is, the very nearest and dearest people and just get their take on it and maybe their advice and just speak to other people um, doing what you want to do or something similar to what you want to do. Um, and then really, you just need to make that decision and go for it. Okay, so I will put that into a much more logical um, format on the hub and go into a lot, lot more detail, but I hope that that's given you enough of an uh, overview of the things that I was considering and what my key signs were. So thank you for your question. 
Um, and then another question I'm going to answer and then I'm going to stop is by Chrissy Cosmos. Um, and you asked, do you have a favourite hook brand? Not crochet related. Um, second question, not crochet related. Favourite movie or TV show? So my favourite hook brand is Tulip. Can you see that? It says Tulip. And I've got the pink version in this zip case. Um, and I brought this a few years ago in London um, from Tribe. And... Some of these hooks are a bit dirty. I'm gonna have to anti-back them. Blech. Um, it's this lovely set of hooks. I'm not coming too close because I want to give them a clean. But they're in this ombre pink. Um, they start at a two mil, which is a size two apparently, and then they go up to a six mil, which is a size ten. And they are padded and they are ergonomic, which means that they help support your hands and your wrists and your fingers when you're crocheting and I find that since I switched to padded hooks and these ones in particular I can crochet for a whole lot longer than I used to without getting a sore wrist Um, I don't think I've ever used the two mil I think the smallest I've used is a three mil but then I've used all of the sizes upwards Um, so it goes to 2.2 mil for some reason 2.5 mil i don't know why it's not even 2.25 mil it's so random but anyway um 2.5 3 3.54 4.55 5.56 and then it came with a pair of scissors which i have stashed in there but it came with a little pair of snips and it's got a matching um pink case like this let's see if we can find it here we go. So it's got a pair of little scissors, a pair of snips, and it's got its own matching case, and then um, some darning needles, and then I actually purchased a pink measuring tape to keep in here as well, because um, I just find it very useful to always have that to hand. So no matter what project I'm working on, I always keep my hooks in here and I take this everywhere that my crochet project goes with me. Um, I don't leave my hooks with the projects mainly because I have so many projects that would not work um, and then it means that I've always got my scissors, needles and measuring tape when I'm ready. Um, I would like to get some of the bigger sizes definitely padded so if you want to spend a little bit of money and invest in a nice set of hooks. This is your one. I'll try and find a link and put that below for you as well. It might be an affiliate link, but I'll let you know. Um, and then, not crochet related, favourite movie or TV show? My favourite film is Princess and the Frog. Um, I read somewhere, it might be on Mellow Doodles, who is an Instagram account that I follow, that people um, with high performing anxiety or mental health issues will re-watch a film or programme again and again and again because it's comforting because they know what is going to happen so it doesn't take them by shock or surprise and they can kind of zone out. And I watch Princess and the Frog repeatedly. Like, if I'm feeling a bit down, then I'll watch Princess and the Frog. If I'm struggling to sleep, then I'll put that on. Um, if I just want something soft in the background, Princess and the Frog. I was learning Italian at one point, so I bought the Italian version as well. And I must have watched it. I couldn't even put a number on it, but there was a point in my life where I had it on every night when I went to sleep and it would start itself again and play again. So it was on twice throughout the night um, and I know every single word. I'm sure it's because I absorbed it whilst I was sleeping. Um, I'm going to say I must be nearing like the 10,000 amount of times I've seen that since it came out. I actually have it on DVD three times. Um, Italian, English and then Blu-ray because the first one was starting to get a bit worn out 
and then it's also available on Disney Netflix so yeah I watched it a lot um another hugely watched video video how old are you film or movie is legally blonde and I used to put that on whilst I was studying I have done five years worth of um university I studied law and I would just put that on and let it play repeatedly whilst I was studying so that must be in the bazillion thousands that I've seen that one um, and I also saw that at the theatre and then Harry Potter I have watched them gazillion bazillion trillion million times I always whenever I want to watch it go to number three um, and we were supposed to start watching it last night but I think Brad was just a bit sick of watching number three so we watched Aladdin instead <laughs> um, and in terms of TV shows I'm not a huge TV person I would rather an audio book I prefer to be learning um, I know some people watch TV because it's mindless and they can switch off but that's what crochet is for me um, so I do watch Netflix now that I live with Brad I can use his Netflix account is it his twins account whatever I'll use their account one and the same and um, I have just watched Girl Boss which I fully recommend that is a um, series on Sophia Amorosa and she is the nasty girl owner and it's um, based on the book loosely based on the book that she wrote about her life and setting up nasty girl I love watching business anything business related inspiring anything that's going to motivate me anything that's going to teach me and her book was one of the very first books that I picked up in 2016 when I started HGDC and it's been a huge inspiration since I actually have one of the illustrations up on my wall um, and so I rewatched that and then I watched um, Self Made which is about another in another CEO entrepreneur called Madam CJ Walker my mind just went a little bit blank then um it's about Madam CJ Walker Sarah who is the first self-made millionaire in the US and she was also black she was born a free child to um parents that were slaves and she went on and set up a hair care company and I discovered her um, around the time that George Floyd was murdered um, because there was a real push on a lot of the horrific and negative acts on black people and I found an account that was speaking more widely on the positive acts from black people and the things that black people had achieved and I never knew that there were so many black people that had businesses and success and money and wealth because we're not taught about that in the UK in school you are taught about the slave trade and that's it there's so many black people out there that achieved so many amazing things and they're not in the history books for some reason so I'll let you ponder on that one but once I discovered made this discovery I have then pushed myself forward to learn as much as I can about these successful black people um, and so I listen, watched her the series on her life it's just four episodes but it's really really good and I really recommend it and her book is actually the autobiography no it's a biography is on my what read list I'm getting confused her biography is on my read list um, along with a few others as well so I'm going to pick that up sometime soon um, and then I think I started watching She Did That on Netflix which again is about black women in business so anything business I'm there anything self-development I'm there um, I'm just not one of these people that watches reality TV mm -mm. or um, like Love Island or anything like that I'm just not your person so I hope that answers your questions there was a few more but I knew that this would run on a little bit so I purposely picked the first five 
and I've saved the rest and I'm going to put them in another one and I'll probably pop up another box just to see if there's any more questions at that time um, and as I said some of these questions are partly more for the hub so I will go into a lot more detail on there for anyone that is interested so thank you so so much for spending this time with me my hands have been very expressive have you noticed it's because there's no crochet in them <laughs> I will see you in the next vlog, which is most likely going to be um, a HDDC hangout, which is where I record myself crocheting so we can crochet together. And I'm gonna make it themed and put some really nice music with it. And you'll get to see some of the projects I'm working on as well. So I hope that this has been um, a nice little change for the channel and thank you for sending your questions um and i will see you in the next one take care tribe bye And I had five come through that I'm going to answer right now in a quick question and answer. Because there's a question and answer. Question and answer, question and answer. Ah. Uh...